phone call. Mm. And it was from a photographer that I know. Sometimes I work as a, a model, like a photography model, a right, right, right. model. And uh, he's he was in a frantic uh, mood, and he calls me, and he says, Ben, Ben, what are you doing today? I said, oh, well, well, you know, I just have some work to do. And right, right, he right. said, oh, our model today was in a car accident. I have oh. no one. Can you come in? So I came in. I didn't oh. know what it was about. And hey. it was a wedding shoot. It was a wedding and shoot. It was a traditional Korean wedding shoot. We, <laughs> we had like uh, Western clothing and yeah, yeah, yeah. Korean clothing. Oh. And so, uh, yeah, it was really fun and everything. And it took all day. But I decided to play a little joke on my mother because, oh, right. because I miss her so much, right? <laughs> right and right. Uh, she's always curious what I'm up to. Anyways, I took the pictures and I sent them to her by email and said, Mom, I went off and got married and got eloped. <laughs> Elo elope eloping is when you run off and get married and don't tell right, anyone, right? Right, right? And she, it was a dirty trick. It was a dirty trick. <laughs> she, she was a little bit upset. I said, I said, Mom, I just play these jokes because I love you. <laughs> so you I, as she said, well, that's not funny. <laughs> that's not funny. Don't do that again. <laughs> but uh, in the end, I think she got a laugh out of it. Yeah. Yeah, so I had an interesting day yesterday. Um, ben, you know, we just talked about your mom. How long has it been since you've seen your family? Ah, oh, wow. Mm. It's been we're close to a year and a half almost. A year and a half. A year and a, how long has it been since you've seen your family? Do they come visit you in Korea? Ah, uh, you know, um, we had a concert actually in Korea. I think it was in January, and my mom came to see me because of that. My mm, dad and my right, sister's okay. like school and work, they were busy, so they yeah. couldn't come. But the last time I was together with my family at home, um... It was last August or September. Yeah, so, so it's almost been a year. Yeah. So I understand how that feels. Yeah, yeah, like don't don't you miss like going home and like seeing everyone like eating like I, I miss food. going home into my house and opening the refrigerator <laughs> and eating anything I want. You know, we <coughs> always have a lot of food. We have a big family, right? And yes. I just miss opening the refrigerator and right. there's anything I want there. All my favorite foods are just automatically there. <laughs> right. My mom just takes care of all of that. Right. Oh. And Ben, you know, I'm assuming I'm assuming you live by yourself right now. Yes, I do. Um, you know, because you live alone, are there times when you like feel sorry for yourself and like you open the refrigerator and you're like, what am I doing with my life? Like, there's nothing in the <laughs> fridge. Like, ah, oh, life. Actually, it's funny that you say that because yes, uh, <laughs> um, actually, when I moved into my new apartment, there was no plug for my refrigerator. Oh no! And so now my refrigerator is just it's standing there oh. and not doing anything. I don't, I can't even use it now. So oh. that, your little question, your little anecdote, it really hits home. It strikes uh. deep. You know, <laughs> I, I can't even open the refrigerator and see nothing now. They're like, how do, how do you keep the food in your house? Like, what do you, what do you well, do? Well, <laughs> I moved in when it was cold and I have this veranda. Oh. This veranda, you, you know, it's just a place where my... Like a little balcony kind of. Yeah, a little yeah, balcony, yeah. but it's, it like has indoors. the same room. It's yeah. indoors, but um, it has the same, pretty much the same temperature as outside. Right, right, right. So I just left things out out on there. Oh. <laughs> I can leave milk out there, right, anything, right. you know, food. It, but now it's getting a little warmer. I got to figure something out. <laughs> yeah. So there's like, there's no plug hole, like, or is there like no like plug like for the refrigerator? Well, I don't know who designed this apartment. Right. Uh, I didn't notice it when I went to visit, but uh. Uh, where the refrigerator is, there's no plug. Right. So if I want to plug in my refrigerator, I have to get an extension that goes from behind my refrigerator all the way across the middle of the room. <laughs> and it has to, and it, it's just going to be this, this ugly line. <laughs> It goes in the middle of my room. Right. And I just can't bring myself to do that. Right. E even though it would give me the powers of refrigeration. That's true. Oh, dude, that stinks. <laughs> Anyways, well, Ben, last week, you know, you gave us hints for the person of this week, but you left us all hanging. So it's time to reveal this week's star for who's following now. Before we do that, what was what were last week's hints? One more time. All right, I'll lay them on you. <laughs> Hint number one. This actor was first introduced to audiences on the American sitcom Growing Pains at the age of 14. Mm. Now, that's a difficult clue. Right, if you I, haven't I, watched yeah, Growing Pains. They'll get a little easier. Right. Okay? Clue, hint number two. He's named after a famous Italian artist whose last name is Da Vinci. Uh, I da Vinci. The... Ooh, mo, 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 Da <laughs> Vinci. Okay, gonna... hint number three. He stole Kate Winslet's heart in the movie 
Titanic. Oh, all right. I think you know. I think it's easy. Can you tell our fans, our listeners? Absolutely. If they don't already know, it is the one, the only Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio. Woo! And I have to admit, he is my favorite actor in Hollywood. Really? Yeah, I, I really love his movies. Wow. Yeah, he chooses such cool movies, really. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. So, they're all so interesting. They have some... He's just different than yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. a lot of things that you see in Hollywood, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can, can you give our listeners a little background on Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so, he's had just this long list of movies. He's made Shutter Island, The Beach, Titanic... Uh, Django Unchained, which came out last year, right. Inception, uh, Catch Me If You Can, The Aviator, Blood Diamond, Body of Lies. Oh, I forgot to mention, his full name is Leonardo DiCaprio. He was right. born 1974 on November 11th. Wow. Okay. Okay. So his his career began as with his appearance on several commercials. So he started out in commercials and educational films, things like that. Right. Uh, his debut film role was in the comedic sci-fi horror film, Critters 3. I don't know if you remember Critters. I don't, actually. Yeah, I don't, I actually, I never saw it either. <laughs> Soon after, he became a recurring cast member on uh, ABC sitcom Growing Pains right. with uh, Luke Brower, a homeless boy. He, he played Luke Brower, a homeless boy who was taken in by the Seaven family. Mm, yeah. okay. So I, I remember that, actually. I actually never that watched it. a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. I was just a little kid. <laughs> but he's, he's grown up a lot since then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, DiCaprio, he's, you know, I guess you can say the top star of Hollywood these days. He, he now. is like, the, you know, it's either him or Brad Pitt, but it's probably him. Yeah. He, he seems to get a little more uh, critical acclaim yeah, than Brad yeah, Pitt. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Brad true. Pitt's great. Yeah. I love yeah, yeah. Brad Pitt, too. They're probably two of my favorites. Right, right, right. But, uh, yeah, he's like the king. He's like the king of Hollywood, you know? You know, um, you say Leonardo DiCaprio, he's your favorite um, yes. actor. Yes, yes. How would you compare him to Robert Downey Jr.? Because Robert Downey Jr. is my favorite. Ah, actor. these Ro days, these days. Robert actor. Downey Jr. Actually, you know, I can't knock Rob Robert Downey Jr. He he's a cool actor. Uh, like I think he has so much like class, like to what he does. But he's so funny. He's, <laughs> he's just so funny, right? He's hilarious. He could be a comedian. Like he 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 yeah. could stop acting and just pick up uh, being a comedian and stand up be comedy. Yeah. Stand up comedy, absolutely. And he's hilarious. And he's going back to DiCaprio. What is he doing these days? Well, DiCaprio, I mean, he's he does what he does. He's just in the middle of making films, like just oh. one film after the, another, you know. And oh. uh, you know, he when he made Titanic, right? He it was just this, I remember it. It was like this like the biggest film ever made and he was like the biggest star ever. <laughs> and uh, and women would just scream and he said I saw uh, he did an interview and he said Oh, some girl was just grabbing my leg, right. and she wouldn't let go. And I told her. I looked down, and I said to her, if you just let go of my leg, I will talk to you. Right. And the girl wouldn't let go of his leg. Wow. So he took that experience with Titanic, and he, and he said to himself, like, oh, I, I don't really want to be a movie star. Uh -huh. I, I want to be just an actor that makes important, interesting movies. Right. So after Titanic, he kind of had this shift in his focus of what kind of movies he wanted to do, right? Because, uh, you know, that, that was, he was kind of a heartthrob then. Right. And that's not really what he wanted. He, oh. he just wanted to be taken seriously as an actor. <clears throat> right. So I think you see that in the trend of the movies that he does now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, he, yeah, he's just making new movies. He's got another one coming out. I just saw his movie uh, two days ago, oh, The what? Great Gatsby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you had a chance to see it yet? I have not. I definitely want to check that out. It was though. good. It was really uh, good. I grew up uh, reading that book, and oh. uh, he did a great job really? as uh, as Gatsby. Just uh -huh. did a fantastic job. Uh, I gotta check that movie out. Yeah, check it out, guys. But um, you know, there's something really funny. Um, Titanic. You know, I've watched it a few times. Um, but you know, I was yep. never like a fan of the movie because it's kind. It's like kind of slow paced, kind of. Boring. Yeah, sure, like, sure. Yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's a great movie. It focuses guys. on. Falling in love, right. and you know, it's kind of slow. young guys are like, ah, get to the action. Where's the iceberg? And <laughs> one of my members, Ren, actually, um, if you remember, like, I think it was last year, Titanic came out like 3D or something. Yeah. And like, he was like, 
oh, young, let's go watch it together. Like, I want to oh, watch yeah. it. I want to watch it. And I was like, I'm yeah. not going to watch it with you. <laughs> so in there, like, he went to watch it by himself 3D. Like, no! Yeah, I felt kind of bad, but I was like, ah, why would you even watch a movie by yourself? Like, you left your you friend know? hanging. I, although I completely understand why. <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm not going to watch I can watch it on the internet. It's like, like hey, man. I'm not gonna go watch Titanic unless it's for the girl and exactly. she's making she's making me. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, guys. Um, we'll talk about Leonardo DiCaprio, his friends. But before we find out about them, let's listen to a song. It is "A Little Party Never Killed Nobody" by Fergie, featuring Q-Tip and Goon Rock. What up, guys? We just came back from listening to "A Little Party Never Killed Nobody" by Fergie, featuring Q-Tip and Goon Rock. And that was actually featured in the um, Great Gatsby yep. OST of the, the new soundtrack, movie. right? Yep. And you guys are listening to the second hour of Music Access with me, Aaron of New East. Who's following now? Today we're following Leonardo DiCaprio. Let's take a look at his first connection. Who is it, Ben? The first connection we have today is Jeremy Lin. <laughs> Jeremy Lin. The NBA basketball player yes. for the Houston Rockets. Yes. Now... Who is Jeremy Lin? Not everybody knows about basketball. Right, right, well, right. he is better known as the phenomenon Linsanity. Yes. Now, what is Linsanity? Um, <laughs> you know, um, I'm not. I was in Korea when this like Linsanity. Like, yeah, I was in Korea on. too. But um, you know, from what I remember, it was like um, this this new guy, this like new Asian young guy, like. He yeah, comes into the NBA and like he's just like ripping everyone apart. Yeah, like. well, okay. Well, what kind of what happened was he had been, uh, you know, when he went to university to play basketball, right? He, nobody recruited him, right. but he was really smart, so he went to Harvard oh. and he played basketball at Harvard. And Harvard is considered like this really small basketball team, right? Right. Anyway, so he did really well, and he got drafted by the New York Knicks, right? And but they. They never gave him a chance. Right. And they sent him down to the minor leagues, right? right, right. And then suddenly, this the stars aligned, right? <laughs> and and uh, all these players on the Knicks get hurt, like the entire first team. Oh. And so they're like, oh, okay, well, I guess we'll just give this guy, Jeremy Lin, a chance, right? Right. And uh, it, there are no other Asian basketball players in the NBA, really. Oh, it's uh, just Yao Ming. But like, uh, Yao Ming's, okay. Yao Ming's kind of old now. Yeah, so. there's like two or three, maybe. Yeah. Anyways. So he he comes in and he just starts winning basketball games. Yeah, like like, like tears like teams apart. And like. all his teammates, he's like the leader, right? Yeah. And, and uh, he and the crowd gets behind him suddenly, and he's hitting game-winning shots. And he and the Knicks would go into uh, like the other team's arena, and everybody would be the entire arena would be uh, cheering, cheering for cheering. Jeremy Lin. Yeah. And the next thing you know, <clears throat> on Sports Center, ESPN in America. Uh, like every day they start, what's like Linsan today's Linsanity? It's Linsanity, you know. Yeah. It's not insanity. It's Linsanity. Right. And uh, they just every day it's something new about Linsanity. Yeah. What what is Jeremy Lin up to these days? Like you know. Well, these days Linsanity died down just a little bit. Yeah. But he's still doing very well with mm. the Houston Rockets. He right. actually got traded, and uh, they're doing well this year. I think right. they're in the playoff hunt. But uh, on Twitter. He, this guy, the cool thing about Jeremy Lin, he's very, very smart and he's and he's very deep. You know, mm. he's a very religious guy. So he tweets about, uh, you know, things he reads in the Bible. But he also, he's got a big heart. You know, one of the things he tweeted this week was a link to a girl who's dying of leukemia, oh. and she needs, uh, you know, uh, a marrow transplant in like two days. Oh. So he was on there trying to find a match for her. Oh, I, that just, you know, that. That's... Things like that you see from a celebrity or an athlete, that's just so cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, that shows like how humble they are, even though like they're such big stars. Yeah, and, you know? and, and, and that's the thing about him. He's just really, you know, that's why he has a lot of fans. That's why yeah. he's really appreciated. Oh, Lin Sanity. I still remember that. Like, I remember, like, I was in Korea, and my friends would call me, like, dude, like, have you heard of Jeremy Lin? I'm like, like, what is Jeremy Lin? Like, what what's mean? a Jeremy Lin? Yeah, what's a Jeremy Lin? And they're like, dude, you don't watch the NBA anymore? I'm like, ah, oh, dude, like, there is no NBA in Korea. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, I'll look up on YouTube, like, wow, this guy's, like, insane. Like, Oh, so popular. It yeah, was just this wave ridiculous. Right, that he rode. Yeah. But, um, you know, how are DiCaprio and Jeremy Lin, how, how are they connected? Well, Leonardo DiCaprio, 
he's from LA, like yourself. Right, right. And he's a huge Lakers fan, like oh, yourself, right? Yes. However, <laughs> uh, DiCaprio has the means to afford, you know, courtside Lakers tickets all the time. Right. right, right. Uh, anyways, I think he was just. Uh, taken up by uh, Jeremy Lin's story, right. just like everyone was captivated by it. Like the right. whole country was rooting for him. China right. was rooting for him. And right. I think he just became a, a Jeremy Lin fan. And they're both into charity. They're both mm. really big into charities. And so they have that commonality, right? Oh, okay. So, okay. yeah. He's just